right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, fans of Sky Terror. Welcome to yet another edition of Sky Terror Live. I am the commander reporting in for duty. Joining me once again in the booth, at least for the first half, is Mateus. Welcome. Howdy, Margie. All right, so before we get started here, uh, as we do know, this is going to be the continental battle for the triple lane finals of the September Clash. It will be Bearcat on your bottom versus Samuel Tron representing Europe on the top. I do need to make a quick announcement just to let you guys know. I had a prior commitment uh, before the start of this game at 8 o'clock. So basically the way this is going to work is Mateus and I are going to comment the first hour of this game. At that point, I'm going to leave but keep the stream up running. C-Dubs, I believe, is going to swing in, join Mateus in the booth, so they're going to carry you through the rest of the game. So whenever I leave, I'm going to keep the camera locked on the board for you, but won't be able to do any uh, sliding up and down, left, right, shuffling, being able to show you guys the cards on the board, etc. But I trust that those two's expert commentary will be able to lead you through the game. Yeah, we'll make sure to carry it out so that even without like showing a card or something, if something lesser is known, we'll make sure to read it out. Yeah, because especially on Thrylane, uh, we see a lot of unusual cards that sometimes we don't see a lot, perhaps, especially Recall, basically using as like a cheat teleport across <laughs> the map, I've seen a mm -hmm. lot of. So we'll have to see what we have from the players there. And we started the draft off here. We flipped the coin beforehand. Bearcat won the coin toss, electing to go second. And so Samuel decided to bring the Terror of the Endless Night onto this battlefield. Yeah, and we do have kind of... Uh, probably the most interesting victory setup we could have for a three-lane game. Yes! Um, all three lanes, very important now, having each player having a breach lane in one and three, mm -hmm. and then lane two being crucially important for both as the outflank lane. Normally, kind of giving a big advantage to someone's breach. Yes, but because of how the tokens ended up randomized for the three lane map, it is actually going to be the case, as as you mentioned, all three lanes matter, which means you can't really sacrifice one lane for the other. Of course, as we know, the rules for Thry Lane bring six, draft five, so you will have the opportunity to cover, and you can see Bearcat is already spreading his heroes out. We've got his Neliklin loaded for the left lane there, Nantaka and Talakali looking for left center, and then Zakol over there on the right. Meanwhile, Samuel Tron has Freyhill ready to respond in the on the right, Eckert in the center, Talakali, Ishitosk looking to cover the center and the left, and the final look looks like to be Estrita for Samuel Tron. Yeah, and I think Bearcat saving his Ishitosk yep. for its last placement here, kind of hoping to respond to wherever the enemy mobility is going to be at. Yes. Now, as you will notice, of course, again, for those of you who are not familiar with Thrylane, you might think, well, wait a second, the players have only set half the board up, there's no minions. That is correct. <laughs> on the Thrylane, only the center control lane gets minions spawned at the start of the game. Three in the center, zero on each side. Normal minion rules do apply at the end of each phase, so starting in turn two, each lane, one, two, and three, will spawn two per hero, of course, assuming that the tower is still alive. Mm -hmm. And we do see kind of both players squared up with at least one of their heroes ready to just take, I guess, the standard lane action for a Thry lane player? Yes! being a move, lead, um, and then usually a worship, which I think is going to be pretty big uh, in terms of advantage to green in this list. Mm -hmm. But someone like his frail, you can note that he's got her set up so that he can worship with her to start with, mm -hmm. move her into that lane, get that lead on control point three, ready to go, uh, and have a street of locked and loaded to try and put that pressure on for outflank. Absolutely, and that's the interesting thing with Samuel's set, is he's got two heroes that are very well known for controlling the lane. You've got Ekrit with her Wind Barrier ability to kind of AoE down minions, as well as Estrita's mm -hmm. kill a minion, sacrifice a little bit of life, and spawn a minion. And looking at the team there from Bearcat, we have a somewhat aggressive team, but not exactly the, the biggest kill, thresher, kill pressure there. Two out of the three are kind of designed uh mostly for killing then taka can be a bit of a coin flip her power comes from being able to get a pillar down plus lots of minions so she's somewhere mm -hmm. in the between area of an of uh you know a, a kill 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 and a control type hero because you need minions in order to make her actually able to kill so we'll see how that plans out for bearcat yeah i think Bearcat running kind of this classic green list i yes. don't know about uh too many others but i know at least in my experience with this clash 
I was running uh, a full green list and ran into two other full green lists. Ooh, I mean, very nice. that kind of full threat activity that you can get with Lakali and Zakol and Ishatosk mm. feels pretty solid in this for uh, accessing all your lane. I think now we should let them know it's time for them to get going. Yes, sir. Let's get them in. All right. So, uh, that's yeah, that's one of the things that we'll have to see here is, you know, the kill play here isn't always the best play just because there's so many different areas. On Ashen Pass, we've got two control zones. Two lane, our standard form, we've got three. On here, we have four. Similar to the Ashen Pass, the dome does qualify as a singular area. Now, the interesting mm -hmm. thing about this particular dome, and I, I will admit that all three of us, myself, Smiaz, Giacomo, missed this the last time I casted the Thrive Lane game to start <laughs> this clash, you can actually be inside the dome and not affect the control point. If you're Bearcat yeah. and you're in the line in control zone four, if you're in the line closest to him, or if you're Samuel, you're in the line closest to Samuel's base and in control zone five, you're actually four hexes away from the cover hat or from the control token. And that doesn't count. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, a pretty weird scenario where normally you only ever see that. in I think Kumaya games really on Ashen Pass. Right. Right. right where you can have that effect also wow running the fast for this deck with the one yellow hero Ooh, just for this play okay <laughs> you love to see it okay so it looks like we're getting that wind barrier down that we talked about bring the end game bearcat's already moving oh. his minions out <laughs> he knows what's coming <laughs> oh yeah, that is nuts. classic accurate play move worship attack delete minions yeah and i mean having that uh <laughs> he didn't mulligan. He just hit it on his first draw. And with the bigger decks on three lane, I mean, it's a lot harder to get those combo right. pieces you needed. Absolutely. You've got a 50 card deck with having five heroes. So let's see. Oh, and you didn't. You had to Lakali, and you didn't get a chance to bring ah. the pillar down. You hate to see it. Yeah, that's going to hurt. Ooh, and that. I mean. Go ahead. I don't know that he wants to invest all that much into this lane to try and protect it here. Right. I mean, doing that is so big. Having that dome influence on top of it is... Yeah, because she's cleared out all the minions and landed herself into Control Zone 5. So she's already got one point, and that point does count. Uh, so yeah. now the interesting thing is, with her position, uh, it is actually possible if Zakol can get a pillar down... He could go for the move skirmish and then attack and punt her into lane number two if controlling the dome was a play that Bearcat might want to set up. Yeah, and it's going to be hard for him to make that choice right. over his own, uh, well, I guess that's his opponent's breach that he would be sacrificing. True. All right, so we see a pillar coming down in the central area. Bearcat kind of realizing, yeah, this token's probably going to move against me, but... I can set up the pillar. <laughs> Minions will be able to be protected next round from Takali. And so now we'll see. Also, by the way, we do want to call attention to the viewers. Note that, of course, when the overlay was built, it was primarily designed for the Ashen Pass and the two lane, which only locks and holds four heroes. So um, we do have the tracker, the HP tracker on view. We'll have to pay attention to that for the fifth hero. It's looking like for Samuel Tron, you're not going to see Freyhill's HP on the grid. And for Bearcat, it looks like Nelik. You'll be missing more of them. Yes. So, um, unfortunately, that's just how it is. Uh, so we will we will do our best to give the HP callouts just so that you're kept aware of the missing heroes. But again, on on Thrylane, especially with a green squad, I don't see a whole lot of combat. Like I'm pretty sure this game ends by either left breach or outflank. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I mean, there's a chance he can have a huge pop-off with Neliklin later or something, but yes. for the most part, his goals are just going to be stem the bleeding. Yes. Also, hello again there, C-Dubs. I apologize. I saw your message there, and then I got distracted with the thoughts and forgot to say hello, so welcome. C-Dubs, as I mentioned, will be stepping in for me in a little while to continue this game because it's Thrylane. I sincerely doubt we're going to get this uh, done in 46 minutes unless someone just completely whiffs it. Uh, and both of these players very, very talented, so it seems highly unlikely. Ooh, interesting. I mean, yeah. Uh, let me think if there's any way that that could even happen. <laughs> I mean, unless they, like, run it down and Samuel Tron wins lane, or Bearcat, I suppose, technically, it's too early to call the lane. Uh, unless one of them wins lane two, like, very, very quickly, 
three in a row. That's the only way I can think of it. Mm -hmm. But that seems highly unlikely. Both players looking to contest the middle there. Nelliklin setting up a pillar inside the cover hex. So very interesting play there. It probably won't be able to protect that many minions, uh, regardless yeah. of... Assuming it's high? So I do know that that uh, hex that it's in is a cover hex. So my guess is he, mm -hmm. he just kind of wants it on the field and in cover, perhaps looking to set up an unburial rights play. We did not, unfortunately, grab the decks from the players before the game, so we don't know exactly what uh, kind of hardware they're packing here. But with this team... Nantaka, again, does well with lots of minions. Unburial Rites is a great way to get minions on the board. So you can Unburial Rites all but one pillar, leave the pillar up to activate Nelliklin's ability, and then Stabby Stabby, and someone's dead. Yeah. And I think something, I guess, that we need to note here is uh, we are seeing a double Sakali matchup. Oh, <laughs> you hate to see it. All of these pillars, like placing that pillar in the cover hex, maybe he doesn't want it to be in range of that's also true uh, the minions when they come down yes i mean just as detrimental oh yeah that's a good point um you hate to see it but such is uh such is the way of the game i mean i think it's pretty rare that we get to see what is likely almost a fully lane and minion focused game um the terror does have a big opportunity to make an impact on this map i mean with yes. how many cover hexes there are oh yes dragging people into oblivion oh so much yes on any other map yes yeah they're you know one of the one of the big strategies on ashen and really even too late honestly whenever you win the terror or you, rather when you're going to lose the terror is just plug up all the cover hexes and that way the, the opponent is forced to spawn the terror in a very suboptimal hex Mm -hmm. You can't really do that on the Thry lane. Yeah, especially for that outflank lane. I mean, <laughs> there's so much cover. It's just incredibly hard. Even if you wanted to, yes, plugging all four of those cover hexes is just on either player's side of the map is just super, super hard. Yeah. I mean, you look at the center. We have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight there. Uh, mm -hmm. There's three, ten, it looks like eight, no, nine in each lane, and then obviously some behind the white line. So, yeah, there, there's basically no way to block out the terror uh, and stop it from at least doing something. Yeah. And so we do now see Bearcat here having taken uh, his Zakol. Mm. Likely going to be popping that minion in the center lane with his worship action here. Yep. Or not, he actually chose just to place a pillar. Okay. Interesting choice. All right, we've got that going on. Very nice. So we'll likely see a mirror out of this frail at some point. Yes. To set up the Estrita for, or, well, I guess the best thing he probably wants to do is to have Estrita set up for next turn. Right, right? yeah. Finish. I would probably move her into position first. Uh, mm -hmm. although, although the thing is, though, Takali's led from the hand, so I suppose you don't even really need frail. Like, I suppose... Well, actually, so you don't need Estrita? I'm sorry, yeah, well, you don't need Freyhill to, to shapeshift Estrita. Um, yeah, because you can't attack anything. Right, exactly. So you might as well just like move with Estrita, maybe uh, attack the pillar that uh, Bearcat set up, and then worship to shapeshift yourself for next round as your final action. Maybe? Yeah, it's not a bad action. Because you can't you can't shoot to Kali, she's in a cover hex, so you, aren't, you won't mm -hmm. have vision for that. Um... <clears throat> There's no point in leading in the lane until Akali is already leading for both players there. Uh, oh, excuse me. No, only for Samueltron. But, yeah, so there's no point with no. leading uh, mm -hmm. for... with uh, Can't speak. English is hard. No point in <laughs> leading with Estrita because Telakali is already leading there. Yeah, so maybe we see Estrita go into the dome. Could where be. Where she can move, take a lead, finish her activation, mm. still in range of Frail. Yes. Um because Frail wants to move into that one cover hex Indeed. in lane three. Yes. Get but the it looks oh, like oh. he is going to activate Frail here. Okay, interesting play. Let's see what we've got. Going for the move action. Perhaps Frail going into the dome. Eh, maybe not, thinking about this one. Yeah, I'm not sure if he wants to sacrifice his ability to hit a breach that early. Uh, yeah, especially because Zakol's going to be... Yeah, with Zakol pushing strongly against that control token, that's going to go right up against the tower. Obviously, again, no damage at this point, but means you have to win by more before you're able to start damaging the tower in future rounds. Yeah, and so now maybe he skirmishes her out of this position. Mm 
uh, so that Estrita can get into the lane as well. Because right now, if Frail stays there, Ooh. Estrita cannot get anywhere closer. Correct. Okay, looks like he's going for the lead in the Worship, so it looks like Estrita is going to head into the center lane. Oh, I need to get outflank off the field here. There we go. I mean, does Frail have... I'm trying to think of if he has even anything he wants to do with that final action on Frail is going to worship herself. So the one thing that I could think of is if there's a breath of life. So Astrida mm -hmm. moves over, uses breath of life. Oh, no, wait a minute, because you need line of sight to spawn where you're going to spawn the minions, so that's not going to work. Never mind. Yeah. Ignore that plan. So maybe he has... He could have another fast. I mean, that would be a good way mm -hmm. to kind of make her activation worthwhile, because as right. it stands, her only options are going dome or going for... Uh, that center lane. Right. And so we see Ishtosk going, using her worship, not removing any pillars. Okay, yep. Ishtosk marching up there. Ooh, going oh, no, zoom zoom. Did remove one. Go and zoom Here's zoom. Left reach pillar. Okay, so that explains why the uh, pillar was over there. We want to bring Ishtosk, and it looks like Nelaklin, or excuse me, Nantaka is going to come along with her buddy there. So now we've got uh, Mr. Big and Grouchy, the. Tank machine going to go for some tank on tank action here. Oh nope, we're just gonna stop and punch the pillar. Makes yep, sense. Get rid of that. Finally, the attack it's action. Freed up as possible for uh, X ram Yes, yeah, because as you mentioned, that Lakali pillar uh, protecting those minions is gonna make this game a very very big stalwart if there's too many on the field. Yeah, and so Nantaka's positioning here helps him flex. Pretty well, yes. considering Samuel Tron likely has no ways of uh, getting another person into that lane over there. Mm -hmm. uh, and Taka can either head center, kill a minion, drop a lead, or if somehow a person does get over there, he can invest uh, and talk into that land as well. Indeed, yeah. Even even with an another fast card, Estrita cannot make it into lane number one. So that lane is pretty much done and dusted. Estrita, as you mentioned, has basically the options. Is she going to help support the dome, or is she going to support control zone number two? Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. Move. This should pretty much tell us everything we need to know, because here's the thing. If you don't move Estrita into the dome, Nantaka could move attack skirmish back into the dome to tie, or she could just worship, move to reposition herself, and lead and win the dome. Yeah, and that attack's not going to be worth too much with Takali protecting both of those minions currently. Right, and with no minions to support it, Nantaka does have uh, pillar power, but with no minions, you're still doing the 2++. Ultimately, not that bad. Takali's going to take that no problem. Yeah, losing that lane by 2 or losing that lane by 3, it's really not going to make a difference. Right. All right, what do we got here? So, Strida is... Go Ooh, okay. Strida's going for a skirmish. Trying to a little bit more of a forward position. Yeah, being a little provocative here. You like to see it. <laughs> Flapping that fishtail. Come on, big boy. Come here. Oh, wait. Are we playing a card here? Nope. We're just throwing Ishitosk's card all over the field. Okay. Okay. So, Nantaka, the final activation this round. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you've got the right call on the dome. It seems yep. like the most likely option. Okay, so we have a lead action. I just really want that pillar. All right, so my guess is we're going to have a lead, probably a, a move, and a worship. Uh, just because yeah. you want to reposition Nantaka a little bit, and then you get the dual worship effect of shape-shifting her and placing yet another pillar, which actually puts four pillars on the field, which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, there's the worship action. We love to see it. Worship actions, again, reminder, obviously we've had this rule in place for a while now, but in case you've been away, because I noticed we've seen a couple people that said they've been away from Sky Terror for a while and they're just coming back. The dual faction heroes, Kumaya, Shadris, Nantaka, and Vorhild, get to use both factions' worship actions and the new heroes, the new red-green and green-red heroes, will get to do that as well. What do they do? Well, you'll have to stay tuned. Um, we aren't at that point on the spoiler schedule yet, which... We will be coming up to actually very soon. Yeah, so we did see them talking here opt to worship mm -hmm. uh, before the end of the activation. So it drops the shapeshift at the end. Yeah, that was kind of interesting. I'm guessing is playing around charm. Mm, good call. We'd rather not give that up for free to Estrita. Good call. This... Yeah. All right, so let's do some math here. So lane number one looks like we win by three because there was a lead from 
Uh, the... Yeah, issue toss leading from the deck. It's a one. Okay, that's good. That puts the control that's token up there. Lane number two. Oh, nope. First to spawn the minions. Okay. And remember, again, you yep. do draw cards every time you win any lane, which means you win lots of lanes here, you get lots of cards, which can be good unless you overdraw. Yeah, and with how much investment you're likely going to be wanting to put into each of these lanes, kind of each of them demanding an equal amount of attention, <laughs> having those threes in hand, mm -hmm. having them ability to lead from hand consistently is going to be huge. Absolutely. We just saw it there with Samuel Tron hitting that one on his three for Mishitas. Yep, unfortunate there. All right, so next lane is number two. Looks like Takali led with a three, yep. uh, which and means... Bearcat did not lead at all. No. So Samuel I mean, Tron going to oh, no, he's lose. oh okay he did okay there we go but nevertheless control token number two going to go right up against bearcat's tower so again do remember that the order of operations is important if this turns into kind of a race out scenario where the tower for samuel tron is damaged in lane number one and he has two points on outflank at the end of the next turn Bearcat gets the advantage going at the re resolution of round three. Number one resolves before number two, which means if he can blow up the tower, it doesn't matter if he loses lane two in the third round. Mm -hmm. I mean, for Samuel Tron, the control point three is probably his weakest mm. choice of investment. Yes. Which makes that tie that he's likely about to hit there not a huge deal. Right. And, and having that tie at that point, honestly, is mostly, I think, just to kind of help protect his lane there a little bit. For, again, it doesn't really matter. It's not his breach lane. But now, as yeah. I, if I'm Samuel Tron, I've got four minions in the center lane. It's kind of time to start compressing this. You've tied for one lane. You've got minions there. So at that point, I'm willing to just kind of sack lane three because that's going to take a while to destroy. So move yeah. Freyhill more into the combat zone and have her help support your control zone two, help support your bid for the dome, focus where you have your advantages. Yeah, and him having the ranged hero in that lane does mean that if he wants to kind of take Frail out of there, move her into the dome, allow Eckert to kind of get herself back into the center of the action. Um, Frail being able to just take that one minion on her way into the dome would be a pretty big advantage over Zakol, yes. who would have to basically keep himself out or sacrifice a lead to the dome. Yes. All right, so now, with that resolved there, we've tied in lane three, so minions are spawned, and now we do math in the dome. Nantaka had a lead, which Eckert did not, which means it doesn't really matter what you led with unless you led with a zero mana, which would be highly yeah. unfortunate. Um, so he is going to get this terror. We call that the Clinton play. And now, where does the terror spawn? I assume you have to spawn it somewhere in lane number two. Unless... Yeah, I mean, he's a good option to take Slakali way out of the fight, but... So, so here's an option. You could do that, or you can spawn it right below Ishatosk in lane number one, grab Samuel Tron's Ishatosk, slow it and push it so that it's, uh, it's like, completely irrelevant, and force Samuel Tron to commit more resources to prevent the tower blow up in lane one. So the rough part is that Ishitosk is in cover. So even spawning in the oh, other Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Good call. That is a good point. Good call. That is correct. So never mind. Ignore that plan. Stick the bear somewhere in the middle. But, I mean, the downside is even if you grab Sakali and pull her, yeah. that pillar is positioned correct. in range. So yeah. It is going to block pretty much no matter what, Sakali is going to be able to do her thing. Correct. So the, well, mm -hmm. so, hmm. You grab frail, honestly. Well, here's the other thing too. Um, so Akali can't use her ability if she's not within three of a pillar. So you could always yeah. grab the bear and try and smash her through. Nope, you can't do that. Anyway, any way you try to shove her, she'll still be within three of that top pillar. So you could grab her in one of those nexus hexes. Oh, but he does choose to place it near Ishtos. Well, You're the, a minion. The, That's a lot of sense. The, the, problem, the problem with the Nexus Hex, then, is that white line, so you can't see her. Because it's target? Yeah, so you would have to move, grab her, and then shove her. Because the shove will... Uh, oh, okay, I see your plan. Gotcha. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that feels really bad. Ooh, plus three on Ooh. the flip. You yeah, hate... that also feels really bad. You hate to see it. Okay, but... Now we see what he does with the rest of this. Yes. So, move... We have... 
Okay. So can't grab that. Um, that's in a cover hex. Yep. Okay. Oh, I think you realize. <laughs> Bear, Bearcat just made the same same mistake that I did before. So uh, also because apparently the Terra Bear card is not showing. Let's take a look. Uh, we've alluded to most of this, but the Terra Bear does have to spawn in the cover hex, as you can see. It looks like right now we're going for the Dreadful Majesty ability, where you place the target hero adjacent and then apply Disarm. Uh, so that'll be the three actions, as the other two were the move and the attack options. So Tank Man is now disarmed. Ishatosk does do zero plus a flip, which could be useful in this minion game, as you mentioned, because... Minions have 1 HP, 0 armor, but Ishatosk's base value of attack damage now is 0, which means flipping a 0 or a minus 1 does protect the minion. So, I think now, kind of what's happening is, uh, Bearcat has forced Ishatosk to have to activate early. Yes. Because if not, he's going to he's gonna be pretty quick to develop a wall on mm. this side over here. Yep. And I don't know exactly how... Samuel would be able to get Ishtosk over the wall without just going right off the bat saying, all right, I'm going to get into that one cover hex, mm -hmm. vulnerable to things like slide. Right. Um, but still kind of safe. Yeah, once once you get um, that wall built, if you're Bearcat, pretty much the only thing you would be able to do is if you had, say, Tlakali summon a pillar like on the far side of lane one towards the, the edge of the map and then just kind of long run worship your way around it but that feels so bad to have to do that yeah and you know as samuel here like if you don't then taka's gonna go yeah and oh yeah he's gonna slide into that spot mm -hmm. and uh maybe i mean he could also just have uh, like flux into sinkhole flux into chasm all sorts of that's true yeah strong turn uh turn two tools with that flex here fun fun and interactive gameplay results as we like to say the turn to sinkhole you love to see it says absolutely no one back in the good old days when you flex rampant hatred on the other hand and then just sat by and one okay, shot the, <laughs> the outsider as your opponent just twiddled their thumbs and said wow yeah. this is some garbage I'm here people were happy about that <laughs> back in the good old days when rampant hatred was not blockable because pierce or because targeting wasn't a thing for skirmishes and all that fun fun time uh let's so see bearcat here Ooh. looking like he's choosing his Tlacali to start with okay interesting so as you mentioned this is going to give bearcat the option to build the wall now unless Tlacali, yeah Tlacali's going forward looks like she's going to set up to protect that final minion from yeah the... there won't be any more pillar generators yeah hmm this is interesting. Dangerous spot to be in. I gotta assume in that case he has some sort of uh, interrupting movement type three mana card in hand. Right. Yeah, because this, this seems like a pretty big gamble. Either that or... Yeah, yeah because... So there's one sinkhole and one chasm gone already. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna rely on you to, to dig through the graveyard and see what flips there is because I don't want to yeah. move the camera. So if you could keep a track of that, that would be greatly appreciated. All right, so that's but so I think in this case, actually, you know, I may be wrong. We may indeed be able to speed run this one in twenty five minutes because it looks like Samuel Tron might just focus everything in lane two and Bearcat focus everything in lane one. Yeah, and, and, I mean he's got the heroes to do it. Yeah, I mean so Holly can make her way over, mm -hmm. add to it, kind of keep building that up. Yep, especially if you've got an Unburial Rights card like. Oh god. There are four pillars on the field right now for Bearcat. You just spawn, 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 and kaboom. Well, they won't be in range. Like, you have to keep them in line of sight. So they are pretty disparate right now. Um, I think you can actually only see one at any given moment for his deck. But um, it is kind of a bummer that he didn't bring Kotlik. <laughs> so, oh, that that's right. The they did show... Okay. Matters. That's true. I forgot. Yeah, Umbrella Rights is Pillars in Line of Sight. For some reason, I thought it was Remove Any Pillar. Then I'm mixing that up with Kotlik's ability. Whoops. That yeah. makes things significantly okay, better. Goes ahead and puts up the block. Yep, there it is. Defense! <laughs> Defense! All right, and the attack action kills off the last minion. Presumably... Oh, here's the thing. If you worship with Nantaka, there is no sinkhole play because Nantaka yeah, being exactly. shapeshifted does not, get does not get moved by enemy card effects. Also, another number three 
on the flip. You hate to see it. Yeah. Um, we have seen a lot of threes coming out of Bearcat so far. We which have. I think has uh, kind of seemed like a pretty good move on three lane. Just with how often you want those leads out of hand, with the tendency for games to go mm-hmm. long. Mm-hmm. It makes a lot of sense to me that something like blue, green, and just stacking it with all those really impactful controlling threes. Yes. Uh, it just makes a lot of sense. Absolutely, yeah. And and that's the thing with Thrylane is just because it's such a much larger map, I think control does have a far bigger advantage than mm-hmm. than a kill style aggression play here because you you just okay fine you're killing my one hero here meanwhile my heroes are taking this 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 and this and congratulations now i just out resource you yeah yeah exactly and that one like any time that you can make someone have to work just a little bit harder to move somewhere on this map mm-hmm. hurts so bad yes very it's much so so often that you're like chasing that one single spot you can reach yes. to get in control range or something all right, so <clears throat> excuse me. So, so the wall action setting up here. We've got the Nantaka, no. Bear, and Ishitosk. If Nelliklin moves over there and gets on to where the pillar is currently, that's going to be enormous. Oh, we see a pillar being moved. Uh, no, he was just okay. placing that one. Okay. Um, so he is obviously going to be pretty vulnerable to a sinkhole here, um, but with that added Nantaka safety factor from this warship. Mm. And with the fact that he can save Ishitosk for his very last activation here. Yes. Um, he's got a hell of a lot of advantage on actually keeping this working. 100%. Which is to see if he can pull it off. Yes. Yeah, like this... Ooh, this looks good. So yeah, it depends on what cards, but if he, if he has something... Um, you know, call the pack just to get some extra mil- minion spawn. Remember again, of course, Neliklin mm-hmm. effectively has four mana, given the fact that he can worship, remove one of the pillars and then just re-clean off his mana. So if he's got uh, any kind of generation there, that would be very useful. Um, able potentially to, you know, double cast uh, something like an Unburial Rites and maybe a Slide. So in order mm-hmm. to, to slip Ishitosk out, again, Bearcat does have final activation. So even if he uses a... S- well, here's the thing. Or even just having the ability to cast a card like Call the Pack. Yeah. Cast your worship. If you can lock, yeah. Mm-hmm. Able to cast something like Amulet would be huge. Yeah. If if Ishatosk, if Bearcat's Ishatosk can use Amulet of a movability, then Sinkhole does not help because, uh, well, I guess you could move the Terror Bear over one and then slide Ishatosk in. Never yeah. Mind. Never mind. I take that back. That, that's his hope here, right? Yeah. But even then, you're investing all of Ishtosk's mana. Yes. You're vulnerable to the slide mm-hmm. yourself now. Yeah, now the counter slide I mean, could come in and kick you right out. It's a lot of effort to potentially get shut out of that lane. Yeah. So, uh, Bearcat now kind of taking... Or not Bearcat, sorry. Samuel here mm-hmm. taking his choice of hero. Ooh, looks like Freyhill's going? Yeah. Okay. Huh. So Freyhill... I'm curious to see what he thinks she needs to do, because that tide lane is really slowing down that win con. Yes. Uh, hmm. Like, here's the thing. Freyhill cannot get within range of the control token. Uh, mm-hmm. unless, unless she moves and skirmishes, like she can land on top of the Eckerd Illusion token and get in range there. So she could, like, move skirmish lead, I suppose, or move skirmish worship, perhaps. But if she's on the control yeah, token, really she can't... Kind of ugly. Yeah, she can't she can't worship Estrita if she lands on the Eckert token, and if she worships Eckert, she can't influence the control token. Yeah, it would also put her in danger of Zakol. Yes, coming out and just knocking her back away. Accurate. Yes, Zakol go punch punch boom, um, as he would be able to be within range of that pillar that we see in the bottom corner of Control Zone Five. All right. So looks, looks like she's like... choosing to keep her in the lane. Okay. Interesting. I'm not sure I agree with this, but hey, I'm not the one playing, so... Yeah, so if he is banking on just, he's gonna survive this turn, mm. he could set up kind of a split on the next turn where he wins on outflank and he wins on breach. Mm. And I hope that any overinvestment from Bearcat into lane one here uh, ends up biting him in the butt. Oh, another, another plus three! Minion. Wow. All the ultimates are being used to kill the minions. You hate to see it. And takes a lead from Oof. deck. Okay. Yeah, but Isn't that just one of the worst feelings, right? When you attack, hit a three, uh-huh. and immediately you go to lead from deck. Yep, and it's like, oh, why didn't I lead first? Son of a gun. 
Can I never lead first? That's the thing. Yeah. I always ask myself, why didn't I lead first? But I know I'm never going to actually right. do it. Why would you? Yeah, it's like, unless you've predicted it, like, there's no reason to. Except for then you would have hit the three on the prediction instead of the attack. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that's the yeah. thing. So I, I think you're right. I think Samuel might be trying to set up some sort of a split action, but it goes back to the same thing of lane one is Bearcat's Breach, which means it doesn't really matter. You can't damage the tower this round, so Bearcat can just yeah. abandon lane three. Bearcat just funnels everything and says, okay, cool, you're going to win at the end of turn three. You're going to win with either lane two or lane three. I don't care because lane one resolves first, so kaboom. Yeah, and that's his last chance to have activated um, to have activated his Ishtosk and gotten into rage. Yes. Because now... If Nelfin takes that spot, even with a move and a skirmish, he can't make it because Ishtas is going to slow him. Correct. He would have to have the sinkhole in order to... Or a way to get the slow off, which I don't know. He Maybe, I guess it would have to be a charm. Uh, right? So Ishtas is disarmed, not slowed, because he wasn't actually hit with Dreadful Majesty. He will be slowed. Oh, right, from the activation. You're right. Good point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. If there's a charm to cleanse the slow, that would be <clears throat> what he would need there, but... Ah, that feels rough because you'd like to use that charm to try and steal something, maybe a shapeshift or another status condition. That also takes the, uh, takes the sinkhole off the table. Yeah, it does. Because then even with the flux, you're out of mana and you don't have any heroes that could uh, reaction charm cleanse for you at this time. So maybe then... It's not Melathen who goes there. I think it might have. I think it might end up being Sakali who ends up in that lane as well. Mm. And he just doesn't want to show that hand yet. Right. Okay. Bearcat, opening with the lead. All right. So All he right. doesn't fall for this Bear, trick as us. Bearcat has the stream on in another tab, and he's and he's here as us yapping. And he's like, "Don't worry, guys, I got you." Okay. So Nelaclean is going though. One, two. Okay. Moves into range. Okay. One, two, three. Into range. Hmm. Interesting skirmish. Oh, so here's the thing that I forgot. That you know, sinkhole. Sinkhole is a mm -hmm. sinkhole is a target, which means yeah. you can't push the bear over to the left and then slide over into control zone one yourself. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So. Oh well, yeah. I guess you could rotate. You could do a three way rotation. You could rotate Ishitosk in the bear. Yeah, you could move the, yeah, yeah. into the bear. Yeah. Okay. Ishitosk so you could do that. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. You could do that. Okay. Uh, so we do see the lead, the move, and the skirmish. So Nelliklin realizing, hmm, there could be... Also, oh, oh, uh, oh, 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 oh. did not get shapeshifted. Uh, that's not right. Maybe enough. That's not right, because he did... You, I mean, you could technically, I guess, shapeshift somebody else, but he should be shapeshifted. Maybe he chose to order it so that he didn't? I don't know. Um, that could be, yeah. But, I mean, that's that's more than likely that going to harm him than help him here. Right, yeah. Because now, now, now uh, Nelliklin and Nantaka, I hate when both of them are on the field because their names are very similar. And, and... I mean, that could also mean that a chasm hurts him really bad, mm. uh, getting that pushed out of the way. Yeah. But Nelliklin having the lead, Nelliklin's pretty safe. Yes. I don't think that character's going to leave influence anytime soon. Correct, yeah. With being two away, you would need, I believe, two cards, because I can't think of anything they have that's two. That yeah, and he just doesn't do have it. the heroes for that. Yeah. So here's a crazy play. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five. So here's a crazy play. Um, oh, no, it's one short. Never mind. Forget it. I was going to say you could use Ekrit to win Barrier, Vanellaclin first, and then do some shenanigans to throw him out. But I think you're one you're one heck short. Even with a fast card, I, I believe it's one heck short, uh, which would have been awesome. So we are then going to see. So Estrita can still make it into that lane as well. Yep. She has the later move skirmish Indeed. and. Yep, move in. She skirmish probably isn't going to be worth an attack because of the poly protecting him. Right. Um. You would, however, block Ishitosk's only way into that lane. Right. <laughs> oh, no, 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 she couldn't. She could, she could move and skirmish and get far enough in. Yeah, she could end up uh, below Nelliklin and uh, Ishitosk, that hex to the left of the pillar, and that would allow the Ishitosk from Samuel to swing over and affect it as well. You are correct. Yeah, so he's got, he's got routes to defend this right now. Yep. But 
maybe Bearcat closes him up with the Kali next activation, um, or we just see Samuel take one of those two moves now. Still debating on who he thinks is worth activating. Bearcat hovering his hand over the flux. <laughs> oh, Bearcat, that's not Probably yours to not use. Active, but... yeah, that's not yours to use, Bearcat. You chose to go second. With all the advantages and disadvantages that come with. Man, that frail move is starting to make make me kind of question where this is going to go because the characters that Samuel still has left to activate mm -hmm. kind of feel like the the most consequential ones, right? Right. Ishtos still can potentially. I don't know how Ishtos actually makes anything happen with its movement. Um, all the pillar generation that he can do was left on Sakali. The cards aren't really going to help him with mm -hmm. Dreams being a target yep. and Stone Barricade being a target. So hmm. I think he has to start piling into that lane soon, though. Yeah, because as it stands right now, uh, this is game over, right? There are no, yeah. there are no, yeah. there are no minions to defend that tower, and Neliklin led from hand, so we presume that it's a three. And, and I, if you're Samuel here, you're thinking there's a slot, right? I think so. Yeah. You have to be worried about it. Yeah. So maybe you. I, I still think you just have to do it though. You just have to keep. You have to put both Estrita and Ishtoska in there. Yes. Say you have to have both slides. Yes. If you really want to stop me? That's what you gotta have. Okay. Looks like Akali or Estrita has been pinged. So Estrita's gonna go. Yep. So I assume. And I think for the sake of his game, he's gotta get in there now. Yeah. It feels really bad to waste a shapeshift on Estrita, but. You kind of die if you don't. Yeah. And, it, I mean, he can still, like, get a skirmish off and... True. It's somebody with disarm, right? Uh, well, no, here's the thing. Because oh, no, move it, no, because you won't have line of sight after the move. Unless you have yeah. fast. If, unless we have a fast coming out. Um, yeah, a fast is probably the biggest thing he can have right now. Yeah, right? That'll because... let him get into, into um, a spot where he's only two away. Right. Although, does Disarm really do anything at this point? Like, both of the minions for him are dead, so it's not like that does anything. Yeah, I mean... Ooh, so he does okay. take the skirmish, gets into that spot over there. Okay, so you're in position to get blasted out of the control zone. Yeah, precarious location. What's gonna happen? I think he has to lead. Yeah, because it's, it's as you mentioned, yeah, you, you attack till Akali absorbs the damage... Uh, no minions spawn. Everything is fine. But, I mean, the odds are in Samuel's favor that he has an out, right? He has the, the odds of being able to flux out a chasm or a sinkhole. He's got seven cards in his hand. But don't forget, uh, bigger decks, as you mentioned earlier, bigger decks means it's less yeah, likely. Yeah, exactly. And we've already bigger seen... Deck. Several of those. You said, I think we see, we've see we seen one of the... Oh! Okay! <laughs> Well, if I knew who I wanted to slide out... Uh, that pretty much confirms who we would slide out. Yeah. So, Presence, uh, everyone's favorite card. Caster gets plus one extra control value, and you get to predict two, Ooh, so... Doesn't hit it three, though. Okay. I'm just going to have to take this lead from hand. All right. But still, that means Estrita is now worth five, so if there was ever a time to punt her out of the arena, this would be it. Yeah, I mean, I think you can save that slide, right? Save it for when you think it's really going to matter. Yes. Um, like, use it after any potential interruptions come down from Samuel. But he can't save her somehow. So, so interestingly enough... Oh, my gosh. Yeah. What is he doing? Mm. He ends with a worship? Um, Does he not have a three? Um, Sir. <laughs> sir. <laughs> okay. Sir! So he's still losing from this position. I, I mean, now, <sighs> if Tlapali goes and takes that spot, Ishitas can't even get into the lane. Yeah, sir! Sir, what? I... Oh, man. Mm. But Tlapali gets the move, gets the skirmish, she's in the position. Yeah, um... 
this this is where we're going to start spamming the question marks again of course both players have six cards and we can't see what's in their hands uh, maybe he but, just bricked he only has like one and two many that's, cards that could be the case you know even with the higher variance maybe you just kind of said well nuts i've got absolutely nothing useful here in this scenario and we're kind of screwed and here comes down another pillar from Tsukali. Okay, so we see the little Tsukali. Oh, eh, oh, wait. <laughs> what are we doing? If there is ever a time to whip out the Umbura rights, though, this would be it. Well, yeah, so this would be Umbura for two. Yeah, which would be can, pretty good. Can save for Ishitosk, maybe, if he really wants to hold on to it till the end. Keep it as a surprise factor. Yeah. See, see what's going to happen here if Samuel Tron's going to try to, like, move? Um, well. Yeah, with that slow from Eshatosk, he's kind of yeah. stuck. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got three hex movement. There's no pillars out for you to taxi yourself into position. Uh, um, hmm. Maybe... If Eckert has a fast, she could come she down. Push, she can push Slokali she out, could. out of the way. Yes. She does need a fast in order to do that. but uh, And she would get the pillars, too, which actually would be very... Uh, uh, okay, okay, so she does have the fast. Okay, so there's unfamiliar terrain. Uh, again, speaking of cards that we haven't seen for a very long time. Yeah. I mean, stacking in as many fasts as you can makes sense on this map to me. Mm-hmm. So fast is going to be applied to the caster and then apply a slow to an enemy hero within three. Uh, obviously no hero there able to do that, but that's fine because this is really what you're after. This wind barrier yeah. right here is going to allow Tlacali, or excuse me, to allow Samuel to push Tlacali out of the control zone. And also more and importantly, really yeah. So it's the Kali for one damage, yep. and it's going to slip her right out of range. Oof. Give Ishtatoska a spot back. Mm -hmm. Now, interestingly enough... Um, oh, she was on a pillar. He's losing two pillars from this. Yes. Ooh, uh, that hurts. Uh, well, only the one, right? Because the other one is out of range. The one next to Estrita is out of range. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but still, you are correct. Losing a pillar there does kind of hurt also where is slide okay ah not what i was looking for okay hmm. so yeah this does still kind of depend on is there a slide right at the end of the build yeah so yeah because you know takali only contributes one but astrita contributed two um yeah so being able to throw a, a astrita out still net positive mm-hmm and this does feel now kind of unfortunate for Samuel Tron, where he's almost over-invested in this lane. Yes. Um, like, granted, he does currently, I think. Uh, does Sakai have a lead? No, she does so, not. So no leads. He does, he does just barely not destroy this tower. Right. Um, which might be to his benefit, I think, actually. Mm -hmm. It's so, easier to stay in control range. So... One thing that I'm going to suggest is that there is no slide from Bearcat, and here's why. If there was, Bearcat should have reacted to the attack action, pushing Estrita down, which means that Takali could only have been pushed forward, still keeping her within control range. So, oh, wow. That would have been a hell of a play. So that's why I'm going to suggest, because I know Bearcat is a good enough player that I'm going to assume he would have seen that. Um... And so I'm going to make that claim then that Bearcat does not have a slide for that reason. So I am going to contest you on this one. Okay, please do. Always good so to have you. So you do make that play, right? Okay. And so Holly gets pushed back. Mm -hmm. Ishitas can still make it into that lane. The goal is not to prevent any influence. It's to prevent the lead worth of influence. Because the street at two right now still doesn't win. Right now, I think your only focus needs to be keeping Ishtatosk out. So saving the slide for whatever Ishtatosk gets in, I think is the most important. Okay, that's fair. You're you're getting rid of two versus getting rid of four. That's fair. Uh, and meanwhile, we see Zakol kind of 
Zakol has been abandoned by his friends. Zakol is like Zakol is the kind of person that said, "Hey, what are we doing tonight?" And everyone's like, "Yeah, we're going down to Joe's Pizza Shack." And then everyone forms a separate group chat and says, "You know, on second thought, let's go over to Lucy's bar instead." And so Zakol yeah. shows up at Joe's by himself, and everyone's like, "Oh yeah, dude, we had a last minute change of thought, didn't you hear?" I mean, this is like an awfully specific story, but. No, I've actually not had that happen, believe it or not. I realize I realize that many people might think that I've actually experienced that, but I haven't. Um, but I have had a couple friends that I've had too, and I'm like, see, this is why I just don't make friends with people, because then you can't have that happen to you. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. <laughs> so now uh, he's taking the move with Sakol, just kind of initiated things. Um, honestly, you're still losing out, like, no matter what. Yeah. I don't know how much it helps you to get in here. Yeah. Yeah. Get the, just, get the dome. the dome. Get the dome. Control the dome. At least take home a prize here to help you set up for turn three in the event that you can't blow up the tower here. Yeah. Which, I mean, if you can't get this tower here, being able to just grab a street up, punt her into the Nexus. Yeah. That's going to feel great. Mm-hmm. All right. So we have a lead action there from Zakol finishing that off. Ay ay ay. Okay. And so finally, the Ishatosk activation occurs. Let's see what happens. So Ishatosk slowed and skirmish, skirmish into that spot. Makes perfect sense. I assume you go for the worship here because you can't really do too much else. And then yeah. go for the lead. Oh, Breath of Life. Oh, so that explains the worship okay. Thing, yeah? That explains the worship action. But yeah. he can no longer cast Sinkhole or any of his other big moves here. So this is the point where you... Well, do you want to push him here? Uh, I don't know about that, because you can just move back in. Uh, you can move back in and then play the, the lead after that. So no, I think you let this happen. Yeah. yeah. That one point hopefully doesn't make a difference if you have the out, right? Yeah. See, the the, the 3,000 IQ play here is if I'm doubly wrong and Bearcat has two slides, and then you just kick both of them. Which would actually be hilarious. I mean, it would be huge. Uh, yeah, that double that would be hilarious. I'm going to contest that there are no slides in his hand. Joke's on me. There's two. So he does now take that final action with the lead from him. Oh, no, not final action. He still has one more. Yep. Takes the lead from him. Maybe mm -hmm. he finishes off with a worship. Yep. Defends his last minion from uh, Ishtosk attacks. Yep. Because that control or that pillar right there will allow Tlakali to do some uh telepathic prevention unless there is a defeat in hand perhaps uh although actually now the only thing i can think of really would be like a bewitch but bewitch requires adjacency yeah, yeah. and it's cannot even get yeah. adjacent. this is this is this He's is just stay put. yeah this is not oh, covid safe worship. yeah you could worship that's true unlike oh, actually, no. yeah you could worship um, you can skirmish and then worship. Because you have to go around the tower. To get oh, there. you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can't, you don't get to tunneling. You don't get tunneling ability, which is a shame. We need tunneling in this game. Maybe uh, maybe the new guys can do tunneling. That would be cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. which the move is called tunnel. That's true. You should be able to go under things. Yeah. Game designers. I think be stronger. Where are the game start... designers? I want to start campaigning for a better Ishitas. Make Ishitas great again. Well, wait, he's already great right now. Make Ishitas greater. Mig. And so, final activation of Ishitas. Yep, so we do see the worship action, so I assume we're going to remove the pillar to the left of Estrita because uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, you can just barely make it there. Um, although, interestingly enough, uh, the Ishitas is also slowed. So. Mm. With that, mm, mm, I don't like this. This is very risky here, actually, I think. Yeah, it's not really a great spot to be in. <sighs> yeah. The, like, it's, it's, you set up a great wall. The, the wall, the wall was built. With it. Yeah, the wall was built, but I'm not sure about the execution on it. It's a little, mm, a little bit weird. All right, well, uh, unfortunately, it is 8 o'clock, which means it's time for me to bow out now. So C-Dubs, I see him waiting here in the rosters patiently for joining us. So thank you very much, C-Dubs. Gentlemen, take care. Good luck. I'm going to mute and sign off. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for the players as well. Everyone, have a great night, and we'll see you guys next time. Good luck. Peace out, RG.
CRG. Okay, so we do get now this pillar coming down for Bearcat. He's going to move his own Neliklin, get a little bit closer, move his own Nishitosk into range. Okay. So maybe you just take this attack, chip a little bit of damage onto the enemy Tlakali, and he's now going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 7 to his own, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Not really a huge win. Oh my goodness, never mind. That's going to be a big help. So him dropping the Zotland Hungers here. Going to remove that enemy pillar and that minion, but unfortunately trigger the terror. Who, unable to target Ishatos with anything, should be able to attack that minion in response. Also, C Dubs, if you are saying anything, I cannot hear you. Hello? Hello? Okay, now I can. Okay. How's it going? Pretty good. I mean, I'm excited by. Uh, the fact that we get this big brawl in the center over here. Mm -hmm. I'm not so excited at the fact that this terror is probably going to take out this minion and prolong this. It's oh, yeah. It definitely... Uh, cover cover kind of it. It. For playing the Zotlin, it actually just uh, removes the minion, minion, but also removes his own minion. Because of the or, terror. Unless Samuel chooses not to do that for some reason. I mean... Yeah, so the bear does take out that minion. It ends up being an even trade. Kind of a bummer for him. And he did forget to shapeshift Nantaka, but I don't think that matters, right? Yeah, yeah like, I don't think it's going to end up biting him here. But are they tied uh, here? Um, one, two, three, four, seven to one, two, three, seven to six. So it'll deal single damage if he doesn't have a slide here. Which, I mean, you gotta hope that he does. Because otherwise, then that's a lot of investment to get barely anywhere. Yeah, he's going to have to do something next round big to get this breach. I mean, he just saw the advantage, but I think that's the last round he's going to have. Yeah. Because he's just going to give up his breach over here on lane three, and then uh, also this middle uh, outflank is going to trigger as well. Yeah. So, but yeah, the breach, yeah, the outflank will trigger first, but. I mean, he could just have plenty of bombs for the last round. And that's just going to be what does it, but oh, looks like it's just going to be no bombs for him, and unfortunately, two more ultimates gone off of those leads. I think now we've seen... He has to have something. He only played one card this round. Like I think his deck is stacked with just threes. Like, just threes yeah, all so he's gotta like have, Yeah, he's got to just have a bunch of threes in his hand, and he's going to execute here. Because he, he's pretty confident that he's going to stack. If he's stacking this lane, he's pretty confident he can get it next round. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. Or he would have like shifted over and done something a little bit differently. I don't know. Because if you can test out flank at least once, it makes it a lot harder to win it on that win condition. Yeah. And um, we have seen out of uh, Bearcat's deck here, he, we actually have not even seen a two-minute card. Like, we've just seen threes. Unfortunately, a bunch of ults. Um, but just threes yeah. and... And that's it. Yeah, and who knows if an unburial comes out next round? He didn't have one this round, obviously, or it would have been what it came down. Different. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, I don't know if he could have played it a little bit differently. I, didn't, I guess he didn't really see the Eckert play coming. That yeah. was kind of. Uh, I mean, obviously, it doesn't really matter. It's like one less power damage, but it could come up in the long run. I think that I did also shut down any Imperial Rights plays. Him losing both pillars on that, or one pillar on that hit, and let's call it, like, Imperial Rights for two, and you would lock yourself yeah. out of your first toss move, feels kind of bad. Yeah, it's a meh. Um, Especially when it doesn't actually kill the tower. 
And it's on barrel is going to be a lot easier to do now because they're all just stacked right there. So you just have to find places you can see them. Yeah. And place them where people aren't. <laughs> so yeah. and he's got his good position for, for this round too. Like being able to crowd that control token is going to be pretty big for him, especially if he gets the terror here, considering it's completely uncontested. Yeah. The thing is, is the I guess you can't really his opponent can't get to that back minion very easily, but there's he's gonna have to like move Neliklin to be able to put a pillar down for Takali to protect mm-hmm. that those two other two. Which I think Samuel would want to act first on that just to yeah. be able to kill the one and spawn one with the Strita. Yeah. Yeah. And I think kind of uh any action that he does take if this terror is gonna pull out a Strita. You want to at least make it so that maybe Ishitask is over investing to come get her or something. Um, oh, Asuda can just be neutered here, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just yeet but her right into Dipsa the next. can come down. Yeah, he's going to have to do a lot of setup there to deal with, deal with that because he either needs a pillar card or he needs to bring Takali over to place a pillar and then do the taxi back. Yeah, Yeah, because he can just put her down in that hex next to the tower and just pull her in, push her, and put her, like, on his spawn. Yeah. And so that's pretty useless. Leaf from the deck for Zakol is a presence. The first two-mana card we've seen out of his deck. Can't say I'm really surprised, honestly. Yeah. Or I guess he did put the the Zotlin in the presence. Yeah, you think Zotlin, Presence, Unburial, those are the only three or twos, and then the rest are just the good three cards. And slide, slide, yep, slide. Have not Have you seen a slide flip yet? No, we haven't. I mean, I know I'm sensitive to running with Cole, but, like, he hasn't really made a ton. He hasn't made any use of the Cole's worship ability here. And, yeah, so there's no. the terror just grabbing her, pushing her away. I don't love this location though. Like, I I would have preferred the way that he can get her kind of all the way into the corner. Um, just because right now she's free to get into outflank two, or she can kind of eke herself close enough to Ishtar to make it not really a big deal. Yeah, but Ixus has to waste her, her whole activation unless he has another unfamiliar. To like yeah. even get there, so yeah, it's so like a move skirmish and a worship back up blocker as well. And just yeah. control that space. And so it's either that or just move the terror forward. Yeah, Bearcat has an ungodly amount of cards right now that he has to get trimming down. He had nine just now. Drops another zombie. Used to discard one more. And two zombies. Yeah, I can't say that's a card I'd love to have three of. Yeah, it didn't even really work for you all last round. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think you had kind of realized the part about the bear taking that spot there. Uh huh. Yeah, there's just some uh, of those after the fact moments that Sky Terror will bring you where you're like, oh, that's how that works. And then it doesn't work the way you think it should. Yeah, yeah. That's why, like, I don't know, like, it's maybe important as a player to, like, it's, I've even tried to work on that, is just, like, think through, like, exactly how things will actually turn out. And it's just sometimes hard to do that in your head. Yeah. And yeah. Without actually just doing it. You just learn a lot from your mistakes in this game. Um, why well, I love it. I mean, I, it's like the right choice there is to stand yourself in that non-cover hex, but all of our instinct tells us that we usually want to be in the cover hexes to make any of that work. Mm-hmm. Like it kind of that's that's one of those moments where I can definitely see like, oh yeah, I just would never realize that unless I'm really crucially thinking it out. Yeah, so the ruling there would be if he could make a skirmish action on you, would you have to be forced to skirmish the the hero that he can see? Yeah, see, um, that's why I don't really know. Because if... It's if you're, like, targetable. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know if it works where you're in range to be skirmished, but not in range to be attacked, how that happens. Yeah. Yeah, because I know you have to do the attack, but that would be forcing the adjacency. But if you have an option to skirmish, I'd have to ask about that. Yeah, um, same. And so now going into kind of our round three here, Samuel is going to be debating on who he wants to activate. Which no pillars generated. Ishatosk is going to be hard pressed to find a good move here, but he's making her the first choice. So maybe he has a dream. Eckert fast could take out two of those minions. Mm -hmm. Um. But he's using Ekstas to move. Just trying to get the. Don't see him getting the street to back up unless. Uh... Stone barricade at a Nelithan. There he goes. He's going to... Tries to block a spot, I guess. Wants to keep Ishatosk near the dome. I mean, he's still going to get to... Oh, yeah, spot. I think he... Tar did good. he target a spot? Or no, he just wanted to move there. That was Bearcats in Alaklin. I didn't know if he was casting an, um something... I guess he's just going to give up on the Estrita unless the street he has a a, a condition cleanser for her yeah. to move. Yeah, I guess this does defend his minion. Um, and getting to cast yes. it with Nelson means that that mana can essentially just be cleaned off later on, while mm -hmm. locking Nantaka or Ishatosk out of a three minute card could feel kind of bad. Mm -hmm. Especially considering we have not seen any sinkholes. Out of Bearcat this time. Oh, but a Bewitch is definitely a... <laughs> That's a way around that, that word. <laughs> Destroy is not damage. So Takala cannot absorb that Bewitch, which we'll s might see a reaction from this. Yeah, we could also see him regret uh, dropping both of those Zotlins because of this. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to have a response here, though, because yeah. Bewitch is kind of big here. And he's got a chasm with a... There it is. Targeting what hex? Probably the Ix has hex? Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, he should get removed out of range of sight of that for that. So does mean Ix is still going to stay in range of that control token. And probably going to just return to that same position that she's in now. Yeah, wasting another action, though. So, I mean... I mean, either way, she's she using an attack oh, right now, fine. right? Or no, she was just using a Bewitch, so she just yeah. still has two so actions. she still has two actions. So her Never. option would have been to skirmish in and then attack that other minion. Well, now she's just going to have to skirmish and lead. Mm -hmm. But if she can skirmish and lead from that position, I've... she's not in a really bad spot. Yeah, it's away from the the lines. That's probably the best spot he can put her right now. It's not Shield's three away in. or next door. Oh, stone barricade me or pillar? I guess. I'm not sure why. Maybe he wants to be there. Yeah, making up two spots for safety rather than just one. I guess because he can move the X there and then have the other one in the other spot. Or is that yeah. for maybe Ekrit or I don't know? Takala can't get there quite. Um, yeah. I mean, speaking of Eckert, she's probably the one that he wants to get that lead down on, right? So he can attack this minion here and then try and get Eckert into the spot. Because she's the one you want the lead on, so she can't be forced out. Yep, so he does he's take that back action. That was why, because he wanted to kill yeah. the minion. Um, 
Yeah, I was, I was also thinking if he had the fast on Eckhart, he could, he's making a spot there. Because Eckhart can't be moved with her illusion out. And yeah, exactly. And he do that later, so. Um, so right now. Be interesting. No, you wouldn't be able to do that. One, two, yeah. three, four, five. And right now, Eckhart just on the other move. side and be able to Eckhart shoot. Yeah. <laughs> like go on the like the other side of the tower and shoot yeah, on the other lose way. Your best person to you leave. Have to lose seven. Things, baby. So now Bearcat here, I think you probably do just we'll take her to the poly, up. get her into a good safe spot, and probably drop a pillar to try and protect uh yeah, you just pillar, or uh, I don't know about that. I would I just put a pillar on that other spot and then move. Yeah, yeah, and onto it, and then attack. Oh no, you can't do that though, because you have to kill oh. the minion first. Yeah, so this does allow her to hit that minion first. Yeah, I just don't like the vulnerability. Can... Yeah, he must be confident in his hand. I think he's got some sinkholes if he hasn't flipped any. Yeah, yeah. And plus, Ishitas having spent all her mana already means that it's going to be like pretty difficult to get a response going. Um, the best he's going to have to contend with is going to be a Chasm out of Ekrit. Maybe a Twister of Souls. It'd be crazy if he was running that, too. Ekrit ult, too, pushes, too. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, Ekrit ult would be massive. But it's really placing that illusion for it and not yeah. getting disrupted on it. But it's difficult. And so we are now Samuel having to figure out his next activation. I mean, he has to stay invested in his other two lanes, though, just to ensure that he gets this win. If he does, if he can survive. Yeah, he would just. Well, he only needs to do one of them, right? So it's really it, when it's the coal acts, he could then need to act on the one that the coal's not acting on. It would be easier yeah. for him to do. But preferably, he'd be able to move to Kali over to defend this breach because there's no way Frail's getting over to lane one. <laughs> yeah. It takes, counted, it takes three turns to do that in this map. And it's yeah, like it's insane. Yeah, unless you have fast or Ixa or Yami, like it's not gonna happen. Like, you can't just transition in this map. So we do see it's Lakali go over, settle into one of those few spots that she has available to her. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. And... Super vulnerable spot, but yeah, I mean he's gonna be hard pressed to find a spot that's not super vulnerable. Yeah, this does get him another sinkhole user into the fray could be big or just like a topple would also be pretty good yeah I mean knock that to Kali right out of range topple would be choose, interesting does choose to invest one of his leads in his Lakali so Bearcat responds with his own Zipole so he's forcing showing that hand really early mm-hmm this does mean Frail does not invest herself into Outflake, most likely. She's just going to stay in that lane, hit a minion, and lead. Which would put her at 8 to 1. Definitely clears that out. Yeah, does he, she even need to be there? I guess so. It would be exactly... Yeah, if she killed a minion, moved over... Um, Still not enough to destroy the tower. Well, she just has to win it, right? The It's just win the lane. No, so they have to win the center. Yeah, that's what right. I'm saying. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to blow the tower up or anything, but it would just be minions winning the lane, and they'd be like, yay! But I don't think they can. Mm -hmm. If he attacks and leads, I think there's not enough there. Yeah, which he does. Yeah. And he continues to disprove me and RG's theory, and he does lead before attacking. Maybe because he, he he thinks that the ratio of threes is more in his deck before he flips, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. 
but I think it's probably about the same math and when it comes down to it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, with how big these decks are, like, he's got another 23 cards in there. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it doesn't probably make a difference. It's difference just in, luck. like one in 24 or one in 23. Not, yeah. not too crazy. No. It's just I can think of all those games where I'm like, man, if I did it in the other order, I won that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's games that come down to you flipping just one damage off to and then mm-hmm. pawn it to one. It's it's rough times. It's yeah. fun. <laughs> it makes games of, interesting. Um there was some activation I was making with the scourge and it was like, Yeah, I've got two flips that I just need to hit the right thing on. And it was miss the flip on the attack, miss the flip on the three plus, and then hit the plus three on myself. Yeah, that's happened to all of us. I think with the scourge, it's like that. We stopped using that for a while until, like, recent, just recently. Like, it was one of the biggest uh, outsiders early when I started playing. It was yeah, um, everybody used it, and then it just you never saw it for a long time because just if you lose that thing, you just get punished so bad yeah. by it. Or if you win it, you get punished by it, too, sometimes. So it's like... (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that was an activation where it was like, damn it, dude, I did about as much damage to myself as I did to you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, because of Siphon Soul or whatever, that you're definitely dealing as much damage to yourself as you are to them. Um, But to your advantage, usually. But, yeah, it's, it's... He's interesting, for sure. I mean, I learned to love him on three lane. Almost just for the fast. Like, yeah, the damage is cool and everything, but fast when you're playing an all green deck is so hard to come by. Where it was like, damn, Kotlik with fast? This is cool. <laughs> yeah, there's no actual way to do that in the game other than with the Takali. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Takali ult. I forget about that one. Usually, it's all, it was used to be always when I cast that, it'd be frenzy on all my heroes. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, so I'm all yours. Back then, it felt really awesome having all those double frenzies, and now I'm like just terrified they're gonna take it from me. Yeah, they're gonna exhaust me. So we the Strita is just uh, taking the dome, I guess. Well, she's actually not even in range right now. Oh, she's not. She's she's doing nothing. I mean, she, she does make her... a skirmish move, right? She's now a breath of life target. Like if Eckert gets into that one spot in range next to Nelfin, or next to Tlakali, she's in a spot to be breath of life. That's about it, though. Yep. I mean, that's a pain. It's just within pain. three. Yeah. But even then, it's, yeah, I guess Eckert still needs to move that far anyways to do anything. Mm-hmm. Well, he said you need to keep Eckert over there. But it's like, do he choose? does he choose not to lose or to win? Like, or, yeah. Yeah. Like, he has to choose not to lose first because of the, the lane advantage. And I don't know if he can even win at this point. Um. He does have the two influence. The, no presences, though. Yeah. Um, and the lead being on Tlacali. No yeah, that's not that's not good. But he, he might put a lead on Eckert, too. Just to uh, ensure. Oh, on Burial. Oh, yep, here we go. Burial on Melipin. And so not only is this going to kind of make the situation worse, it's also going to steal a good spot from Eckert. Yeah, unless uh, he has fast and Eckert just blows four minions up. Yeah, or is well, he gonna have enough spots goes there? into that other spot. Yeah, or it could go place. behind Nelicorn. It could go in, oh there, or it could have been yeah. behind Nelicorn. Yeah, yeah, but in this case, like man, taking all those spots away. No, it could not. Eckert now either needs fast or she's gonna need, um, or she's gonna need to move and skirmish. It's a no, yeah, clear, that that. clear and protect those two minions from Eckert blowing them up. Yeah. And I think this is, is over. 
We need yeah, to see a blast. Taking on like a, a sinkhole um, coming out of Slakali and pulling a couple heroes out. Or a wind blast, like you said. Yeah. Yeah, he needs like wind blast, but he has to kill the pillar first. Or I guess he can wind blast farther up, which will yeah. kill the, the three. And Eckert has to um, move and skirmish to get into that one spot. Yeah. Not really going to feel great. I mean, maybe, if Takali has a. No. I mean, at this point, both players are just praying for a sinkhole. That's 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 how you lock it in. Either lock in that you have Takali there to help defend, or that you. Well, even then, it doesn't matter because Eckert's going to be unable to blow everything up from her where she's standing and with that pillar taking up the good illusion spot. Yeah. And there's too many heroes, too many minions to really out influence them. Yeah. Too many heroes with a lot of mana too. And he's got three cards to the four. I guess yeah. he's got three cards for three heroes. Um, I mean, I what got, those three cards are. Four. Got nine influence on the side of Bearcat plus a presumed three on Nelephant. Going to put him at 12. Uh, currently competing with, we, we can assume, is five. <laughs> so even yes. if Eckert gets over and kills a minion, we're still losing. Yep. Move skirmish attack, it's still seven to 12. Or it's hard. Yeah. Whatever. Seven, seven to 11. Or six to 11. Six to eleven, and he only has to win by four to take out this tower here. So he would need some sort of crazy, crazy three minute card that's going to help him out here. Wind blast. Your best bet is wind blast. Drop it on top of a uh, Ishatos Hex. Kill those three minions that are unprotected right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he still has that illusion. He can't be disrupted by the wind blast play, so he's pretty safe there. Yeah, that's I think is only out though. His Unless danger would possibly be getting hit with a sinkhole while he's stuck in the dome during the move skirmish. Yeah, and then getting locked in. But he could play around the sinkhole, the lock in, because it's sinkhole has to target a hex, so the comb can't. Well, Tlakali can target, target the other Tlakali's hex. And then right. comb and that then, whole area. Yeah, that actually blocks him. Well, it, it depends on where when he does it. Because he could play around it still. Yeah. Kind of. No, you'd have no he wouldn't. I think you have to just play it once they've moved or skirmished into the dome and yeah. lock her into her hex. R respond to the skirmish or the move yeah. at the second yeah. action. Yeah. That's where that's where it's pretty much sealed then. And so Freyhel goes ahead, tries to lock in another presumed win. I mean, she's got... Did she leave? Yeah, she led from the deck. So she's likely knocking out that tower if she hits... Uh, one, two, four, five, six. She needs to hit at least a two um, to take five, out that lane. Seven. You need right. to win by... F you have to win by six. Yeah, so if you have to be seven, yeah, so a two would have to be... Yep. And then we do see now. Who's he activating here? Mm, he can't. I don't know where that pillar came from. Yeah, I'm not so sure either. Because didn't he already activate the Kali? Did he activate Ixa yet? Yeah, he did Ixa first. Yeah, yeah like, all He's these are activated. Activated and Slakali. I don't know where that came from. There's no card. Yeah. I'm not sure. But let's see. Maybe maybe they're calling it? I don't know. But let's assume that now your final action for Bearcat here? Did he just activate Nantaka? Uh, 
Maybe that was what it is. It's a pillar from Nantaka, but I don't know why he grabbed his pillar. Yeah, that'd be kind why of... Why would he put it there? I guess it should, maybe he just accidentally grabbed a not-colored one. Because that should be... Oh, yeah, it is the, the his still. It's yeah, those are his. Blue. Yeah, it's... Yep. Yeah, it's the ones on the on the outside he pulled. Yeah, uh, and so Nantaka now being shape-shifted, that makes sense. Yeah, and then Nantaka he just did nothing back. but just stayed there. So Eckert, it's up to Eckert here. If we see a, a crazy play with Eckert, he does well that Switch keeps him in blast out unless he has mind palace as well. He does have a flux. Oh, he's a flux. He sells the flux. Yeah, the the pseudo yeah. mind palace, I guess. And this so does the... shut down the sinkhole play too, because he's going to get right into position and be yep. unable to be moved. He would have to sinkhole now to make him move around, which I don't think he would do. But that's the only thing you can affect Eckert with, right? Because he's the illusion. He oh, do it it's a coal. He did it. Right oh yeah, that's, man, the coal's right there. Duh. Totally forgot the coal was even in, in the equation. He's just like ties his back turned. I'm not here, and then throws the sinkhole down. Yep, it's he's that's been out of the game now. Now this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> God, he was gonna he do something. something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that's his first action, really, other than moving and leading. Yeah, he killed a minion here this round. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, Eckert being... He can't move locked. it. Oh, yeah, he, he just, just walks around. Right in. Yeah, Sinkle's broken, but... um. <laughs> <laughs> Like it prevents him from even driving and out to being to try to win. Like, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's over now because we did the math already. Uh, if he has anything else, maybe with Flakali or I, mean, I don't know what Flakali, reaction speed. Maybe a chasm, a sinkhole. Like, yeah, push or a chasm. out. But he has the lead on uh, Neloquin. No, so N- Nell's pretty safe. He'd have to, like, yeah, there's nothing that could push Nell in two way. So, yeah, I gotta yeah it. oh, it's God. over because he still wins by, I think, six with no minion protection. It's yeah, bye bye tower. I mean, we knew the sinkhole was going to be what ended the game. I can't say this is exactly how I expected it, though. Yeah, we were like, well, we used to play around with Takali. Like, when you said Takali, then I just, like, totally forgot Zakola actually was sitting there. Yeah. Could just cast sinkhole just as well as Takali or better. Obviously better. But they also, pro- I think he has some other good cards in his hand. He just doesn't need to play them. Like, he had yeah. a ton of outs. Um, I mean, he's somehow getting out of this game playing, like, five cards total. Yeah, he hasn't played many cards. He played a Maybe Zotland. Less. No, less, the like Zotland, three. Stone Barricade. Stone Barricade. And then... These oh. two. Sakali plays a Shield Slam. Gonna knock out a minion? Or try to, through a pillar, I guess? That uh, just takes out a pillar, right? Yeah, maybe another Shield Slam... And that'd be three shield slams, though. I think I think it's quite unlikely. Yeah, worshiping. Yeah. Oh, maybe it's a no. I don't, I don't, you can echo it all, but you can't echo it all with the flux. Oh, yeah, yeah. Plus, that wouldn't even get it into. It, it hits only heroes, right? Or does it yeah. hit both? I believe it only hits heroes. I'm not sh- I think it hits minions. Because I think it's... But it doesn't uh, deal damage, right? Yeah, it, it deals. deals two. I think it's Sethers that only hits heroes. I think hers hits the minions. Yeah. Yeah, and pushes heroes. It just pushes... It does damage and pushes heroes, but mm-hmm. obviously you don't push minions, so... But I don't think he can cast it because he need, would need it a flux with the swiftness. Yeah, yeah. Oof. And the the illusion would be better at in next to 
the other to call or his to call and killed two of those after the shield slam. Mm-hmm. I mean, I assume he's like playing through all the cards in his hand, trying to see if he does have an out. But I really don't know if I don't think he does. So we're going to see this Ishitas kind of just activate here and do nothing as it wants to just sit in that exact spot. Mm -hmm. He's just probably going to lead from deck, worship, pass. And then we'll see what happens. But I yeah. think Bearcat's got it sealed. And he's going to yeah. be the three-layer three world lane champion. Class. Yeah, class champion. So takes that lead, takes his worship, replays the left first again. Shield slam. Uh, yeah. So move moving nowhere. Yeah, there's not really anywhere you can move, other than into a two. worse position. Yeah. <laughs> Just not move. Definitely looking forward to the new three lane though, because I had an opportunity to play test it, and it's a vast improvement on this for just being able to like maneuver. And the fact that it's very hard for you to go from one end to the other, they just they did a really good job on the new map, and that won't be out till like next year, sometime beginning of spring. So I'm I mean, definitely looking like forward to that. Some fun to mess around on this map for a little bit. I yeah, think it is. There's it's like a really, fun. it's a really interesting deck building challenge compared to the other ones. Um, like just having the fifty cards for starters is its mm -hmm. own kind of complication. Like I found myself wanting things like swiftness, like amulet. Um, I was running not so fast, just mm -hmm. to try and get through that deck a little bit faster and get to your answers, and then. Man, I slow, guess slow's good. Yeah, slow's dude, good. the breach green cards are great on this map. Quicksand feels incredible. And being able to grasp somebody when every move is so important. That's funny. It what felt absolutely huge. Yeah, movement is very, very, very important. Oh. Another shield third slam. Sinkhole, or third shield slam. I did I called it. <laughs> <laughs> Takes out a minion here. Or does it? How does he protect this minion? <laughs> he doesn't care. I mean, flux out a shield slam. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 to 12? Or am I counting bad? 8 to 12. You just call, you just call it 8 to, to 8 to 2 physical units. And if you just cancel the 3s, so it's still 6. Yeah, yeah, that's just too much. Yeah, you need minions usually to be able to protect towers. That's the big thing. Yeah, I mean, stopping that bewitch is so big for him right here. Well, he had a one cost, he had underground tunnels. <laughs> <laughs> then drops the uh, the second out of hand, so that's gonna lock it up. And uh, with RG being gone, we are relying on them to come join us here yes. in our channel so we can celebrate alongside them. He did have the echo. Oh, off. there it is. He did the flux first. Yeah, he had the flux first. For oh, flux. and that Maybe killer he drew blocked it. that good spot. Yeah. Well, that's why he shield slammed, and then you could put the, the ult there. And another sinkhole. Two and sink another sinkhole. Oh my god. You didn't yeah. even need to use them. Three sinkholes. I don't know what you're supposed to do into it. You were you called it though. You're like you haven't seen any sinkholes flipped yet. And then it's because they're all in his hand. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, he couldn't lose that one. Yeah. I mean, if you see three sinkholes going into a game like this where it was win a lane really hard. Yeah. He he knew what his plan was from the get go. Be in lane yeah. one, win out, and plus uh, the um, burial on top of that. Like yeah, yeah, that was just a good deck building choice. Three sinkholes. Hey, Ooh. how's it going? Good. Congratulations. Congratulations. I did not. I did not get. Um, 
super clear answer from Samuel if he's joining in as well. Um, okay. So question right off the bat. When did you draw these sinkholes? My opening hand was sinkhole, 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 chasm. Oh, man. Oh, oh, I was God. like... I was like, I can just stall. I might, I might have drawn, I might have drawn the third sinkhole at the end of turn one. Now that I'm thinking about it, but my opening hand definitely had two sinkholes and a chasm. Nice. Yeah. I and mean, I just, I was just basically camping out for turn three, and I just knew that there was no way that you can stop three sinkholes. Having the advantage lane for left breach definitely lets you go into that plan. Yeah. Um, end of. End of turn two, I drew the um, the unbarrel rights, and that kind of just clinched it too. Like yep. if if the three sinkholes didn't clinch it, the unbarrel rights definitely did. And I was <laughs> trying to figure out the best way to sequence Nelaclin so he could use uh, like a double mana turn, so I could save up and use basically this whole corner's mana. Mm -hmm. um, ended up not needing all of it. Yeah, you actually had extra mana at the end. Like yeah, because Takali and uh, Nataka. And and Nelicon still had their full mana pool, so yeah. they still could have played um, the two sinkholes just somehow. I was figuring I'd have to bump the Kali out. Yeah. So my you, yep. my assumption was he was going to have a sinkhole to move me out, and then I would respond with a sinkhole to move the Kali out to fizzle his. Mm -hmm. That was what I thought was going to be happening. Yeah. Are you having three sinkholes? You're just going to counter have the counter to every movement. Uh, play unless he had more, but he used mana on. He had less heroes to actually use mana with, so you're just yeah. gonna win that battle. Yeah, Frey Hell being over here was um, kind of like she didn't even exist. Mm -hmm. so we were joking. That's how I thought about Zakol until you played the sinkhole with him. Like, oh my god, we forgot he existed. Like he was yeah. even knew something. Yeah, I um, I was planning on that from the end of the turn to at least lock somebody down, and I figured Eckert's probably the best. Um, he was mm -hmm. trying to set up to play the um uh, the ultimate yeah he, he had he had Eckert's ultimate he had the flux that he couldn't play he needed to flux swiftness then play the, oh, the I didn't even, I didn't even think yeah. about that because it's non ultimate but he did he draw the the ult off the swiftness it would be the the irony there um, uh, I'm not sure his other card in hand was swiftness so he had another one he could have drawn well, he had another swiftness too. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it was interesting though his opener when he blasted those three minions. Like that's a really strong play on this map. Being yeah, once, I, yeah. <laughs> once I saw the fast, I knew exactly what was happening. Yeah, you I just like, like started well, pulling the minions away. <laughs> like, I was like, well, this is this is gonna suck. I don't even need to. I don't even need to see what his other actions are. Once the fast gets put down, there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. I mean, it was super interesting getting to see how you all reacted to uh, the game opening with kind of all three lanes being given importance. Uh, yeah. Like, obviously, we see here that priority still wins out in most cases. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I was just going to say, like, the only thing that I knew is once I tied lane three on turn one, um, my whole strategy was winning the game on turn three. So after I tied, I could just completely abandon this lane. Yeah. Because my... Bit my breach was going to happen before his breach. Yeah, I think the best plan, I think looking back now, is just like for him to just ignore that that breach lane and just go for outflank and be able to move into you and stop you over here. Because I think, yeah, just having someone over in this breach area just completely makes them useless because it takes three turns to move over to your, your breach lane from yeah. the other side. It's... I think it would just have been a safer play for him to just, you know, stack the middle and then transition maybe. Yeah, I, but, I think right. also not knowing, like, the decks that people were running here. Uh, like, within the early game, we were noting how you were only really flipping threes. Um, like, threes and some ones, but... Three mana the cards? Pretty heavily skewed towards having those mm -hmm. late-game bombs. So I think kind of finding the response on turn two felt like it would have been the most important time. Um, just because, like, yeah, you get to turn three into this, and yeah, there's triple sinkhole that you're looking down. Mm -hmm. I have, I don't think I have very many one mana cards in my that's deck. All tunnels. That's it. I had the shield slams. Shield that was slams. about. That was about it. You know the um the other thing I was thinking about. I thought this would have been a maybe a funnier way to win. Um, I had all my heroes over here, and I drew I drew a rampant hatred with Nelton. So I was thinking maybe I could get like a double. 
double, 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 uh, double kill. Yeah, they're all full HP though. It's like, mm. yeah. I mean, I think we saw one point of hero damage this whole game. <laughs> that's why RG <laughs> left. Oh yeah, that's kind of funny. That's the real reason RG left. It wasn't. Yeah, he tricked us all with his movements. He saw the lineups and was like, "Oh no, I can't stick around for this." Yeah, Takali took one health, and uh, the only other hero that took a health was the uh, is the outsider. Yeah. The outsider was a. Uh, not even intended to be hit, but he got hit with the Zotlon hungers. Yeah, we actually had a question about that. If if you actually hit the outsider and they can see you for skirmish, do they have to skirmish you? Um, yes, I think they'd have to. They have to target. Well, they have to target you. They don't have to hit you, but they have to target you. But yeah, they wouldn't be able to choose. Yeah, then the attack on the minion at that point, they'd have to target you with the skirmish. Yeah, I didn't think about him being able to attack the minion. That was pretty annoying. Yeah. Yeah, it happens though in Sky Terror. You don't fully see a thing and then it happens and you're like, oh, like I was talking about earlier. But then you learn from it, right? So yep. Yeah, I um I had all the control cards, the slides, the um the chasms, the sinkholes, stuff like that. I guess I had nourish. It's mm -hmm. a little bit of a control card. Rampant hatred. Yeah, I tried loading up with just three manas. Because I figured, in this kind of format, the um, the longer the game, the games are probably going to go longer. I say that, but every single one of my games went three rounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yep. that's kind of how I felt too. Where I thought every game I needed a ton of bombs for the late game, and then it turns out that they were just ending on turns two and three, like normal. Yeah. Right. Like they designed this game to to actually end. Actually, it might even more so on this map that these wind conditions will happen more frequently because yeah. there is a lot of uh, counterplay to movement and all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah. yeah. Like, maybe it's your that Ashen takes the longest. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of funny. It's like my Ashen <laughs> pass games sometimes take eight rounds, eight, nine rounds. Yeah, I think it's like the bigger the map, maybe the quicker the games. <laughs> yeah, like once two you, heroes once on you, this. Once you spread out, it gets really hard to maybe get control back. Yes, exactly. Because like with him having Takali and um, Eckert in the center and Freyhall all the way over here, it was kind of like I was playing with four heroes to his one, or four to two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you went into Terror at the end, but, but neutering his uh, Strida was huge too yeah. from just de defending your, your win conditions. He had, uh, he had the swiftness. I wonder why he didn't... He didn't I guess he could have wanted to... It wouldn't have helped that draw, much, right? I draw swiftness with uh, swiftness. Oh, did you? That's, oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Swiftness into swiftness. On the last uh, activation on... Yeah. You, just, you just always had fast. I just assumed you were going to have something to go a little bit faster. But even, even with fast... Um, yeah, uh, seven cards from one, fast. Two, three, four, five. You're still just barely getting within range. Yeah. Uh, but then, you, you have uh, three sinkhole. Uh, I... and, and then I had the sinkholes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it didn't matter. I mean, three sinkholes, it, it was hard to see any out. Yeah, one sinkhole per hero, like, <laughs> is enough. So yeah. The unbearer race was pretty gross, too. Like, that kind of clenched it with the combination of those two effects. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, being able to just lock out two more spots as well, and, like, two better spots it just adds to kind of the hurt yeah and it was just cool because like my minions are over here in the cover hexes and he just he just can't get there mm -hmm. like there's, there's no way thing. for him to get over there yeah there's that that's one thing it's weird that there's like a ton of cover hexes it's hard you can't go on the other side of them to attack them because there's that white line there's just a lot of stuff going on with this map that's like way different than you're used to playing with on mm -hmm. two lane and ashen yeah. Um, you want to wrap this up? Uh, I think uh, you did well, guys, and it was it was a cool game to watch. Yeah, yeah thank you. Sure. Relay. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so with that, guys, we will be uh, signing off here. The stream may continue as a result of RG being gone, but to everyone who's here right now and everybody who's watching later, have a good night. Come yeah, back good night, and guys. with us next Bye bye. Time. So I'm controlling the table. What's going to happen when I kill it?
That's a great uh, question. I assume yeah. RG will just be stuck at the game has closed page. We'll, we will see all the scary things that are on RG's desktop that nobody oh, wants to know. <laughs> I don't think the game will. I don't think TTS will close on him, so I think we're safe. All right. Yeah, have a, yeah we'll be fine. All right. Have a good night, guys. Good night. Good night.